Hey guys, thanks for joining us for another informative video from RC Juice. Today we're going to talk a little bit about servos. Uh, but what we're going to focus on is not the main information that you always read about online. It seems like most of the info out there is more on analog versus digital, brushed versus brushless, plastic case versus aluminum case. These are all important things to know about servos and are important when selecting a servo for your application. But a lot of those topics are kind of hard to wrap your head around and even if you read a lot about them, you still don't really exactly know what they do. So what we're going to talk about today is the actual mechanical operation of a servo and how it is that they can make so much power with such a small device. While the electronics have changed quite a bit in servos, along with other electronic technologies in RC, the actual operating principle of a servo, the actual guts of it, the gears, has not changed and it's actually pretty cool how they do this. Once you understand exactly how it is that the uh, torque multiplication works through the gears inside the servo, then it'll make a little bit more sense as to why these other things, such as brushless servos and digital servos, are important in the overall function and control of servos. So today we're going to take a look inside a large fifth scale servo, very good for a video and for explaining, um, but again, principles, same thing on all servos, from tiny little nano servos up to large scale servos. The gearing principles are the same in all servos. All right, guys, we got this thing the rest of the way open so we can take a look inside and see what's going on. Down in the main body of the servo, you'll see inside, this just has a regular brushed DC motor. Uh, this is the circuitry controlling that motor. Um, so as far as the mechanical portion of a servo with the gears, how it actually does what it does, how they make so much torque, it's using the uh, same principle that we use in all of our RC cars with the, the main drive gearing. Uh, that's torque multiplication through gearing. So like on our, our RC cars, if you go with a smaller pinion gear or a larger spur gear, you're going to gain bottom end power, it's going to have more torque, but you're going to lose some top end speed. And the same is true for the inverse. If you go with a larger pinion gear or a smaller spur gear, you're going to lose some of that bottom end punch, but you're going to pick up top speed and you're also going to build more heat though. So on servos, obviously what we're generally looking for is to build more torque because we've got a real small motor that needs to make a lot of torque. So the way they do that again is through that torque multiplication. So when, when we take a look at what's going on inside the servo, and I'm going to try to not get this too close to the camera or it doesn't want to focus, but right here on the output shaft of the motor, we have a real small drive gear. It's a little tooth gear. So this is our first drive gear in the sequence. So next up, we have a much larger gear that's going to engage with this drive gear here. Get, get this little bushing out of the way. So right away we have this small gear here driving this real large gear and this is going to obviously build a lot more torque in this gear. And then as part of this gear it has another little gear inside the middle of it. So now this gear, next gear, same thing, large outer gear, small inner gear. This small gear is being driven. It drives against this large gear. So in the first step from the motor to this gear, we're building torque, but we're also losing a good amount of speed. This drive gear, driving this driven gear, again, building a lot of torque in this driven gear, but we're losing speed between these two gears. And for the next part, we're gonna do this off camera because these two gears have to go on at the same time and it's kind of clumsy to do it on camera. And here she is all put back together. So if we take a look at what's going on here, we can kind of follow the, the process. We start out down here, drive gear, Sorry guys, got to make sure you can see this in the camera. And then we're driving this large gear, which has a small gear on it, which is driving this large gear. This large gear has a small gear on it, which is driving this large gear. This large gear has yet another small gear inside of it, which is then driving your final output shaft. So at each one of those points, we're building a good amount of torque, but we are losing a good amount of speed. So if we can plug this into our servo tester here. Now keep in mind, there's normally a cover that goes on in place here. This guy, 
that actually locates these pins and holds everything together. So we're going to try to hold everything. Hopefully it all stays together and we can see what we're talking about here. But watch the speed of the gears as we operate the servo. You'll notice how as you go past each step, we lose speed. See how this guy's going real fast? Can you see this in the camera? There you go. This guy's going real fast. This one's going a little slower. This one's going slower yet. And this one's going even slower. But here's where we've built up all the power. So now you kind of understand how fast a servo motor actually has to operate. Even though the output shaft itself is going pretty slow, the servo motor is cranking inside there. And on top of that, it has to be able to completely stop and reverse direction in a fraction of a second. So that's where brushless motors, which build more power with a smaller size motor versus a brushed motor and digital control start to become more and more important in a servo because we need that precision for a motor that's turning so fast. And you may also have noticed, if you ever look at specs for servos, and you're looking at servos from the same company, servos that are similar to each other, you may notice that there are several similar models, and in general, as the speed goes up, the torque goes down on the servos. And the reason that they can do that with very similar servos is, again, using the example of our RC cars, is just by changing the gearing. So you've got all these different spots in a servo where you can simply change the gearing. So if you change the gearing, if you go with a smaller drive gear and a, and a larger driven gear, that servo is going to make even more torque, but it's going to go a little bit slower. So it's just like re-gearing your car. They're just re-gearing servos to get different characteristics out of the same servo body. Well, that wraps it up for this video, guys. Hopefully now you guys have a little bit of a better understanding of exactly how servos do what it is that they do. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us at the link in the description below. And thanks for watching, guys.